Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that all legal scholars, both sides, wanted and, in fact, demanded be ended. Roe v. Wade. They wanted it ended. It must be remembered that the Democrats are the radical ones on this position because they support abortion up to and even beyond the ninth month. The concept of having an abortion in the later months and even execution after birth, and that's exactly what it is. The baby is born, the baby is executed after birth is unacceptable, and almost everyone agrees with that. You just watched Donald Trump boast about the Supreme Court's deeply unpopular Dobbs decision while simultaneously accusing Democrats of executing babies. Literally. See, what happens is if a woman has a baby and she's like, mm, I just gave birth, it was a lot of work, but this baby's kind of uggo, I don't really want it, the doctor then throws it in the trash can. That's what Democrats support, according to Donald Trump. Now, obviously, that's not true. He made that up. But the reason why he is strawmanning Democrats and pretending as if they support baby executions is because he wants to make them seem radical when in actuality he knows that most of the public views Republicans as radical because they are. Now, in this video, he also went on to assure the public that his party strongly supports IVF as well as exceptions for abortion when it comes to rape and incest. So he's trying to portray Democrats as the extreme ones and Republicans as the moderate ones. But that's obviously bullshit. Now, he also came out against a national abortion ban in this video. He didn't say that explicitly, but it was pretty clear that he thinks this should be a state's rights issue. Let's watch. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others. And that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. I want to thank the six justices, Chief Justice John Roberts, Clarence Thomas, Samuel Alito, Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett and Neil Gorsuch, incredible people for having the courage to allow this long-term, hard-fought battle to finally end. This 50-year battle over Roe v. Wade took it out of the federal hands and brought it into the hearts, minds, and vote of the people in each state. It was really something. Now it's up to the states to do the right thing. So you can tell that he's really trying to straddle the fence here because on one hand, he wants to force Brother supporters to know that he takes full responsibility for the Supreme Court overturning Roe v. Wade, and he unequivocally supports that decision. However, widespread fear over whether or not he would support a nationwide ban on abortion is kind of fucking up his chances of getting reelected. So this is his way of compromising and communicating to more moderate voters that he's not willing to go that far. The problem is that he's a compulsive liar and nobody actually believes him, nor should they, because this is also the man who supports Project 2025. Remember, this document has a goal of enacting a nationwide abortion ban. A lot of the people who wrote that document are part of Trump's inner circle and would likely be part of his second administration. So nobody believes him. Now, when it comes to forced birthers, who he's also trying to appeal they're not going to accept this position either because if you actually believe that abortion is literally tantamount to murder you're not just going to accept that some states have the right to murder babies right they're not going to be okay with that and it also doesn't help that trump's own rhetoric feeds into this because on one hand he'll concoct the most outrageous lies about democrats killing babies after they're born but then say you know what i respect states rights to be able to do this so if you say that these things that democrats are doing are really bad then it logically follows that you wouldn't want to give states the ability to do this right so you understand how his forced brother constituents aren't going to be okay with this either and they're not. And they made that abundantly clear. As Politico reports, 
anti-abortion rights groups are dismayed with Donald Trump for failing to endorse a national ban, but they are not abandoning him. Susan B. Anthony, Pro-Life America, one of the most politically powerful and well-funded anti-abortion groups, said it was deeply disappointed in the former president's decision not to embrace a 15-week federal limit. But the organization isn't following through on plans it announced last year to oppose any presidential candidate who refuses to embrace such a policy. Catholic vote president Brian Birch said leaving the issue to the states was not sufficient but slammed Biden and added that the organization is confident a Trump administration will be staffed with pro-life personnel committed to pro-life policies. Anti-abortion rights groups view federal restrictions as key to counteracting the broad abortion protections that blue states such as California, Illinois, and New York have leaned on since the fall of Roe as they sought to become havens for abortion access, but they appear to be acquiescing to Trump's pitch that winning elections is more important than moving the needle on abortion policy. Now, the reason why they're acquiescing is because they don't really have a choice. Trump is going to be the only anti-abortion candidate on the ballot in November, and there's a reason why he waited until after the GOP primary was over to clarify his position. And now he's trying to let them all down easy, but it's not really going to work, and prominent forced birthers are now pissed, including Trump's own former vice president, Mike Pence, who took to Twitter to say President Trump's retweet on the right to life is a slap in the face to the millions of pro-life Americans who voted for him in 2016 and 2020. And even Trump bootlicker Lindsey Graham publicly voiced displeasure with Trump's position, albeit respectfully, of course, because you don't want to upset daddy too much. Although Trump was apparently upset because he took to Truth Social to bash Lindsey Graham after Lindsey Graham said that he disagreed with Trump's position. So, I mean, Republicans are kind of at a crossroads, right? Because their opposition to bodily autonomy has put them at odds with the majority of the American population. So they're faced with a choice, sacrifice their principles for the sake of winning elections or double down, even if it means losing. Now, it was an easy question for Trump since he never really had any principles in the first place. And I don't think he actually cares about this issue. But actual conservatives like Sean Hannity is perfectly fine with Trump selling out the forced brother movement if it means they can win elections. So uh, here's what he had to say about this. Now, if you ask me where I stand personally, I'm pretty pro-life. If you ask me where I think the country is politically, I would argue probably the first trimester or Dobbs 15 weeks. Any Republican that would ever take a position, and the president was clear in his statement on this too, any Republican that would take a position, no exceptions for rape, incest, or the mother of his life, That is political suicide. Any Republican that calls for a flat out ban politically, I'm talking politically now, that would be outright suicide. But I'll tell you one thing, and this would be an admonition for any conservative or any Republican running, is that is if you're going to take that extreme position, you are going to lose votes. If you want to change the country and if you want to close the borders and you want to turn this this disastrous economy around and you don't like what's happening with war in Europe, war in the Middle East, America ostensibly has abandoned our ally Israel under the Biden administration. If you are are sick and tired of defund, dismantle, no bail laws, etc., this election means everything. Now, any ad that any Republican in any district is running on abortion needs to be answered forcefully immediately by any Republican candidate. If they don't do it, they are going to be positioned by the Democrats and likely lied about and demagogued about. But I I thought the president was smart to get out in front of this. It's going to be a big issue. My opinion is the red wave that many expected in 22 didn't happen because of this issue. It's ironic that he considers himself pro-life yet supports Israel's genocide in Gaza. How very pro-life of him. But no Republican who agrees with Hannity actually thinks abortion is murder. And I say this because if they did, they wouldn't just casually allow murder to continue for the sake of winning elections or under the pretense of states' rights. How voters actually respond when they see real mass murder is they do what Democrats in states like Michigan and Wisconsin did in Democratic Party primaries. They voted uncommitted against Biden to pressure him to stop supporting Israel's genocide in Gaza. But the fact that forced brothers aren't even trying to leverage their votes to get Trump to buckle here tells me that they don't actually believe their own bullshit. They know that abortion is not murder. They just want to control people's bodies. Period. Now, another problem with Trump's unequivocal endorsement of states' rights on this issue is that people are much more nuanced than that, right? Moderate voters 
they don't like this idea of supporting states' rights no matter what because some states are pretty extreme, right? For example, there are states like Florida and Texas that have six-week abortion bans. So if you support states' rights, then you support even that as well. Now, there's an example of this that I want to show you. So here's how abortion-supporting centrists on Morning Joe interpreted his comments. Really surprised. I thought he'd try to weasel out exactly. of it a little bit more than he did. Uh, <laughs> what he just said was he supports, like, Florida's six-week ban. Yep. Six-week ban. Uh, ban before insane. women. Insane. Before women know whether they're, they're, they're pregnant or not. Dangerous. Uh, and bans like Wisconsin had, you know, those eight, that 1849 most total ban. I'm not sure if it's still in effect now, but there are, again, crazy, extreme laws that have been passed that Donald Trump just said he supports and he salutes and said, I'm responsible for that. Yeah, he's proud of it. And Democrats should uh, drive that message home because for women, this is a matter of life and death and the men who love them. Listen, I don't necessarily think that Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski have their finger on the pulse when it comes to what average normie voters are thinking. Having said that, though, with respect to this issue, I do think that it's fair to say that a lot of pro-choice voters, the normies, the average moderate voters in America, they're going to view Trump's position in that same way, and they're going to continue to be as galvanized by this issue, if not more, after Trump made that comment. So he kind of backed himself into a corner here with this video because in trying to appease everyone, he ended up appeasing no one. And what's hilarious is that the day before he released that video, he boasted about how his position on abortion would bring the entire country together and said he would negotiate something that would make both sides happy and bring peace on the issue for the first time in 52 years. But instead, he managed to piss off everyone. So uh, good job, Trump, I guess. Now, having said that, though, I don't necessarily think that his comments are going to have that big of an impact on the election. And I say this because his clarifying comments, they're not going to change most voters' intentions, right? I mean, if you're pro-choice, you're still going to vote against Trump. And if you're a forced birther, you're still going to vote against Biden. That's not going to change. However, his lies about Democrats wanting to be head babies and shit like that, that could actually hurt him with moderate voters because it makes him look desperate for the fact that Americans, they just don't buy those lies about abortion anymore, especially in a post-Roe era where we've all seen the devastating consequences of abortion bans. And the reason why I say it could hurt him is because ads like this, Biden cut up an ad about this issue that I think is genuinely devastating for Donald Trump. So this is one of our willow boxes. This is just filled with some of the things that we had started gathering for her while I was pregnant. Yep. There's her little baby book. This is the outfit that she was gonna maybe wear home from the hospital. All of these. Um, this is the blanket that she was in. <laughs> her little footprints. It's okay. <laughs> I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. That ad is utterly gut-wrenching. So when Trump says that he takes credit for Roe v. Wade being overturned, he's owning the consequences of that decision. He is owning that pain and suffering. He's the cause. And that's why him saying that it's going to alienate moderate voters who are galvanized specifically by this issue. And it's specifically why Trump is trying to get voters to think that Democrats are actually the extremists on this issue. It's because everybody knows that Republicans are. That's why he wants moderates to think, mm, you know, we're the more reasonable ones. Democrats, they're the ones who are unreasonable. They're executing babies. Everybody knows that that's not true, especially if you're motivated to get out and vote because of this issue. So he is the bad guy that Democrats are making him out to be. And that ad is 100 percent spot on. So, you know, he's made quite the mess for himself here. But good. Anything that hurts Trump in the election is something that I fully support. So keep talking, Trump, because odds are you're not going to help yourself. 
do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.